Hello and welcome to the Seth Joyner Show. In Doug Peterson's return to Lincoln Financial Field, the Eagles faced adversity for the first time in this 2022 season. It's time for my game breakdown. After a first series ill-advised pick six by Jalen Hurts and the Jacksonville Jaguars' second series eight-play, 80-yard scoring drive, the Eagles found themselves in a hole 14-0 in the first quarter. The Birds have shown themselves to be a second-quarter team all season long over the first four games, averaging 21 points in the second quarter alone. And like clockwork, Jalen Hurts and the offense went to work, orchestrating a seven-play, 57-yard scoring drive, capped off by a fourth-and-goal TD run by Hurts from the three-yard line to cut the deficit to seven. The defense forced a three-and-out by Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars' offense and Hurts and the offense went right back to work. Miles Sanders was the workhorse on this drive with runs of 8, 13, 5, and 4 yards, and Trey Sermon chipped in with a 14-yarder himself. Sanders capped off a 9-play, 71-yard drive with a 10-yard scamper for a touchdown to tie the game at 14-all. At this point, things began to unravel for the Jaguars. After Lawrence fumbled the snap on third and one, Hassan Reddick recovered, and the offense was off and running once more. As the half was closing, Hurst drove the offense eight plays, 35 yards. This time, Kenneth Gainwell maneuvered his way behind some very creative blocking into the end zone for another 10-yard score. And the Eagles took a six-point, 14-20 lead into the half after a missed PAT by Jake Elliott. The first Jags possession ended in a punt after a T.J. Edwards sack on first down. The next Jazz series saw Trevor Lawrence drive nine plays, 56 yards, before Jonathan Gannon dialed up some heat on the Jags quarterback. On second and seven from the Birds' 16, Lawrence, under duress, forced an ill-advised pass that James Bradbury intercepted, killing that drive. Hertz then drove the offense 11 plays, 78 yards before settling for a 28-yard Jake Elliott field goal. On the ensuing Jaguars possession, Hassan Reddick took over the fourth quarter with the trifecta, a sack, a forced fumble, and a recovered fumble, setting up the offense for a six-play, 24-yard drive, ending with Miles Sanders plunging into the end zone for his second touchdown of the day from five yards out and pushed the lead to 14 to 29. On defense, Hassan Reddick is now silencing his critics. He followed up last week's performance, 1.5 sacks, with two sacks, two forced fumbles, and two fumble recoveries, and was really dominant in the second half of this game. Your Philadelphia Eagles are now the only remaining undefeated team in the National Football League. Coming up next, we'll preview the Eagles versus the Arizona Cardinals matchup next Sunday with Cardinals sideline reporter, Paul Calvisi. Special thanks to our show sponsor, Bridgeview Partners. Bridgeview Partners specialize in IT service management and helping businesses separate from their competition. Go to bridgeviewpartners.com and let them know Seth Joyner sent you. Bridgeview Partners Strategic IT Consulting and Services, saving clients money and time by optimizing enterprise systems for over 10 years now. If you're an IT professional, what are you waiting for? Contact the very experienced team at Bridgeview Partners. These guys have an awesome reputation in the Philadelphia market for their thought leadership, specializing in infrastructure optimization and IT service management for healthcare, retail, finance organizations, and many others. Go to BridgeviewPartners.com to learn more and go Eagles! This car is a steal. Hey, Seth, let's do a deal and I'll throw in this great gift. (laughs) Is that the way you used to buy a car? Forget about it. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Davis Honda has over 300 pre-owned vehicles right now. Come see why Davis Honda won Best of Burlington six years in a row. I'm Seth Joyner and I drive a Davis Honda. Seth, Caitlin, you forgot your great gift. (laughs) Former Eagles linebacker Seth Joyner here to tell you about Artie Clear Kitchens, Baths, Drywall, and Roofing. 
for kitchens and bathrooms, roofing, windows, and other home improvement needs, call my friend Artie Clear. Get 100% no money down financing with payments as low as $59 per month. The first 59 calls will also receive a $400 discount on their first order. And if you're a senior citizen, double. Look for Artie's ad in the Metro. Call today, Artie Clear, kitchens, baths, drywall, and roof. Welcome back. Joining me now with some in-depth knowledge, the Arizona Cardinals sideline reporter, Paul Calvisi. Paul, thanks for joining the Seth Joyner Show. Seth, you're looking good, man. I got to get in the gym. It's a good reminder. You're keeping in shape. Good to see it. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. Listen, you're close to this team, and, you know, through the first, first four games, you look at Kansas City. Kansas City might be the best team in the NFL, bar none right now, and the Cardinals struggled big time in week one. Um, then they had to pull out a mir miraculous win, I should say, um, against the Raiders. Then they came home against the Rams and just got dominated. They, you know, the Rams seemed to have their number. And then they go to Carolina and they decisively beat the Carolina Panthers. Um, as you watch this team and the inconsistency, what are the problems that you see right now? Yeah, they treated September almost like it was August, honestly. They, they sort of eased into the season and they were not regular season ready in week one and Patrick Mahomes made them pay. I, I mean, the defense was not sound. Uh, the offense wasn't firing. They got down right away. They got out of their game plan. Same thing happened against the Raiders in week two and then they made halftime adjustments El Grande. In fact, their win probability midway through the fourth quarter of the Raiders game was 2% and they won it in overtime and you saw Kyler run around and, and that was crazy. They always lose to the Rams. Sean McVay has now beaten three different Cardinals head coaches 11 of the last 12 wow. games. And then they went to Carolina. And I think Vance Joseph, the defensive coordinator, has finally figured out what he has to deal with. Some two young inside linebackers, Zayvon Collins, Isaiah Simmons. There were some growing pains. So now the defense is sound. And they really made Baker Mayfield look bad. And honestly, all Carolina got was a garbage time touchdown. Here's the problem. The Cardinals offense, especially in the first quarter, in the first half, they're the only team set in the NFL not to score a point in the first quarter. And in the first half, they've been blown out. So they've been losing the battle of the scripted plays to start the game, but winning the battle of the halftime adjustments as they scored 23 unanswered and won at Carolina. And they're two and two. And that's the mantra. Just stay sea level until DeAndre Hopkins gets back from the six game suspension in week seven. Yeah, I know they're looking forward to that. And by the way, don't feel bad about the first quarter scoring. The Eagles have only scored one touchdown in the first quarter all season long. Now, listen, as Kyler Murray goes, so goes this offense, and really so goes this team. Statistically, he hasn't been bad, but he hasn't been spectacular either. Um, there's got to be lofty expectations after the holdout and the, con and the new contract demand. No doubt. He was rookie of the year, offensive rookie of the year, right? And he's a two-time Pro Bowler in the next two years. He got the big contract, but they've also faded, in, you know, the end of the last two seasons big time. And some of that's been injury-related. Uh, some of it, I think, perhaps maybe the Cardinals offense got a little predictable. The film was out there. Could the Cardinals evolve and adjust? Here's what happened against Carolina. He decided to run the ball. He had 12 rushing attempts against Carolina, which is the amount of rushing attempts that he had in the first three games combined. And you know, what puts the fear into defensive coordinators more than anything is when he pulls it, when he tucks it and runs it. So they like to think of him as a pocket quarterback who can run, but when he does run, he's one of the best athletes on the field, not unlike Jalen Hurts. And so that's something that they try to use their advantage. And as he's been figuring out the receiver core, Hollywood Brown and that trade, you know, came over from the Ravens, former college teammates. They probably had the best chemistry of anyone, even though he's the new guy, just going back to their Oklahoma days. And then they've had a lot of injuries at receivers. So the passing game hasn't been firing. They ran it over 30 times. They had over 130 yards rushing against Carolina. It was more of a balanced attack. And I expect that to continue against the Eagles. Well, let me let me ask you this, because you brought up DeAndre Hopkins and they're two weeks, roughly two weeks away from getting him back. Is DeAndre Hopkins the fix for Kyler Murray? Now, you guys got Hollywood Brown. The guy can flat out fly. But everybody knows and Zach Ertz is actually having a pretty good year for you guys as well. But everybody knows that 
DeAndre Hopkins is his pretty much his 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 security blanket. Um, is he the instant fix for this for this offense when he gets back? When you talk to the guys on offense, the presence, just the sheer presence of DeAndre Hopkins defines coverage for Kyler. Helps him go through his reads because he knows that D Hop is either a double covered, you know, some bracket coverage over the top, and then it trickles down to everyone else. So as soon as DeAndre Hopkins was out last year with injury, the offense really bogged down, especially the passing game. And and it, it wasn't just the fact DeAndre Hopkins is a Pro Bowl playmaker, it's what he does to coverages. And I think it helps define coverages for Kyler as he reads things as a young quarterback. That's a big difference. And, you know, when Hollywood Brown and DeAndre Hopkins are in the same lineup together and Hollywood Brown all of a sudden is not getting extra attention and he's using that sub 4-3 speed, the Cardinals are very curious to see what that looks like. Now, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, the con- the the, the the Cardinals defense has looked dominant at times and lost at other times. Um, do they have an identity? I know that Baker and Watt and they want Simmons to be, you know, the, the leaders on that side of the ball. But how are the three of those guys performing? And tell me about any rising stars, you know, that we're not aware of on the Arizona Cardinals defense right now. All right, so pick it up on that. Zach Allen just had an unbelievable game. He's in a contract year. He's a young guy, former third-round pick. He was dominant. Him and, and J.J. Watt alongside each other. Cave Carolina problems all game. They had five batted passes, the line of scrimmage combined. Zach Allen had a sack. So that's the up-and-comer. Cardinals feel like they have the best tandem of safeties in the NFL and all pro Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson. They thought easily could have been a pro bowler a year ago. The cornerback room has gotten better. It's gotten healthy. They've gotten some reinforcements. The big question has been on the edge, Seth, because they lost Chandler Jones. It got better last week. Marcus Golden, Dennis Gardeck both got into the backfield. Gardeck got a sack. That's the big question mark on the edge rush. And then the inside linebacker spot. You know, Kansas City came out and they victimized Isaiah Simmons and he was calling the defense and he was he was a liability. There were assignment and alignment errors. Vance Joseph, the D quarter made adjustments. Zayman Collins been a learning process, also a first round linebacker, but he led the team in tackles. So as those two guys have gotten better, the Cardinals defense has gotten more sound. You know, McVay really, really attacked him with certain matchups, but. Vance Joseph has done a good job of taking the other away the other team's top priority. Devontae Adams had two grabs for 12 yards. Cooper Cup, four grabs, really a non-factor. And, and Christian McCaffrey had eight carries for less than 30 yards rushing, Seth. He was a non-factor as well. So Vance Joseph has done a very good job recently of taking away the other team's top weapon. Now, last question, Paul. Is there any pressure on head coach Cliff Kings, Kingsbury um, Steve Kime and Kyler Murray, being that they all were extended, and you see this team is off to a two and two start with so much expectation. Is there a level of, of of pressure there that they're under, or do you think that you know that the organization is in it with these three guys for the long haul? Look, I know it's a popular narrative. I don't think job security is a question. They're all extended basically through 2027 or 28. Is there pressure? Absolutely. They started 7-0 and last year. I mean, they were what the Eagles are this year. They started 7-0, and they were 10-2, and and then the bottom fell out. They lost five of the last six, and that was a miserable playoff performance in the loss at the L.A. Rams. So there's pressure when it comes to November, December, and January. And that's why I think this team's sort of been easing into it. They realized the last couple of years, man, what do we get for being the best team in football in September and October and even half of November? It really matters once you get to Thanksgiving and beyond. I just think this team is pacing itself accordingly this year and still trying to find itself. That's why they played no one in the preseason. It was a very easy camp. They're they're doing everything they can to make sure they're healthy for the stretch run. Paul, great stuff. I appreciate your time and your insight, my friend. Thank you. Anytime, Seth. When I come back, Brad Feinberg will help you set your daily fantasy teams and give his betting favorites for week five. This segment is sponsored by Davis Honda. I drive a Davis Honda and you should too.
Mandrakia Law, attorneys you can trust, we get results. When you need an attorney, you need an experienced trial lawyer who will never settle for less, who's not afraid to try your case, will fight for you and keep you informed. Charles Mandraki and the team at Mandrakia Law have decades of experience. They are ethical but aggressive. Personal injury, DUI or DWI, commercial or civil litigation, criminal defense, experience matters. Visit the website mmattorneys.com and remember the name, Mandrakia Law, attorneys you can trust. We get results. This car is a steal. Hey, Seth. Let's do a deal and I'll throw in this great gift. <laughs> Is that the way you used to buy a car? Forget about it. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Davis Honda has over 300 pre-owned vehicles right now. Come see why Davis Honda won Best of Burlington six years in a row. I'm Seth Joyner and I drive a Davis Honda. Seth, Caitlin, you forgot your great gift. <laughs> Birds fans, if you understand that success is built on trusted relationships and reliable performance, Mid Penn Bank is the right bank for you. We're on a mission to prove that the right bankers can make a big difference and work harder for you. With financial centers strategically located to serve the greater Philadelphia area, we are ready to bring you the best in commercial and personal banking. Visit midpenbank.com or call the number on your screen. Mid Penn Bank, the right bank for you. Member FDIC. Go Eagles! Welcome back. Joining me now is fantasy and betting expert Brad Feinberg with his insights for week five. Brad, how you doing, my friend? Outstanding, my friend. Big Eagles win last week. Oh, it's big time, man. The city is buzzing. So yeah. share with um, with our viewers the underrated players um, for this week and the underrated defense for this week in week five. Well, I had a couple good undervalued last week with Jared Goff and 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 Jamal Williams, and they, they just did it. The Lions did well. Hopefully, I can do good this week. Look, I'm going to start with Tom Brady at quarterback. Seth, look, you know, look who he's going against Atlanta. He's only like the tenth most expensive priced quarterback this week. This is Tom Brady, right? And they have their weapons back. You know, Evans came back, had a huge game last week. Um, I think against an Atlanta team that has been very eh on the defensive side of the ball. I think Brady has a huge game here. I think you can argue he's made the number one quarterback, let alone a guy who's barely priced in the top 10. Running back, one of my least favorite teams, Seth, the Chicago Bears. I think they are as untalented as any team in the NFL. I think they're a mirage of a two and two team. I like Dalvin Cook here because I think this is a game, Seth, we can get margin with Minnesota. Situation where they could really potentially blow out the Chicago team. Dalvin Cook, not crazy expensive, hasn't had a good year thus far. I think this is the spot that he breaks out. Receiver, Tyler Lockett. Here's a guy that's had multiple 1,000-yard years. Very cheap this week again. He's averaging 75 yards a game and six or seven catches a game. He should be a lot more money. And again, I like the way Seattle's offense has played better than most people expected, me included. Tight end. I'm going to give you Kyle Pitts. Now, Kyle Pitts is dirt cheap this week. Now, he was a guy set before the year. Everyone and their grandma had Kyle Pitts ranked right after Andrews and Kelsey. He's really, besides one game old, hasn't done much. But I think this is a game against Tampa Bay where they're going to fall behind, and I'm expecting Mariota to have to pass the ball more than normal, and plus no Cordell Patterson on top of it. I think they're going to throw the ball a lot. Drake London could do some things. I get it. I think Pitts will be more involved in this game than he has in any time during the year. And then defensively, so, listen, I hate to say it as an Eagle fan, but Dallas' defense studs, studs across the board, and I have not seen. They're very cheap this week. The Rams' offense? Did you watch that game last night? I, I, I think, you know, that game last week against uh, San Francisco, I think that they are absolutely in trouble, this Rams offense. I think Dallas' defense is a good buy. Well, listen, I don't think anybody has ever called Tom Brady underrated, but I think that, you know, in light of, you know, the Monday night game or the Sunday night game, I think yes. you, you, you could see that the defense was having problems and that Tom, if they would have maybe opened the, the offense up earlier, they might not have won, but they would have been a lot closer if you just put the put the ball on his arms. Okay, that's great. So now let's talk about the players and defenses that are overrated going into week five. 
I'm going to start quarterback Kyler Murray. He's very, very expensive. Going against a really good defense here. I just think, you know, that offense hasn't looked quite right. I think Kyler Murray is the number two or three quarterback this week, a little bit overpriced. Christian McCaffrey, love the player, still banged up, Seth. Tough matchup against Frisco. He's the number one price running back this week. I say he has a bad game, actually, so I would not invest my money on him. CeeDee Lamb, while I do think Dallas' defense is good, Rams' defense, Jalen Ramsey's probably going to be on CeeDee Lamb. I think it's going to be a tough spot for him to have a good game. Again, he's one of the more over, higher priced wide receivers of the week. I think it's going to be a tough matchup. Tight end, George Kittle. Frisco, they run the ball. Seth, all they do is run, 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 run. And, and then Debo. Kittle still being priced as like a top three tight end. I don't see it. Don't like him. And then defense, Chargers. Uh, you know, I don't love I don't love this Chargers defense. I think that they uh, are very overpriced in Cleveland. They've actually been decent on, on offense. I say that Chargers, not a good value this week. And for those who like to add a little bit of excitement to their game day with a little wager, what's your top four games for week five, Brad? Seth, don't get Eagles fans mad. I'm going to lean here, Arizona, even though I don't like Kyler Murray per se. I think it's a tough spot going in the desert. Arizona, I think Eagles will win the game, Seth, but I think the point spread's a little bit too high at five. It needs to be a close game. I think Arizona, a good spot for them and a close loss. I like them plus five. Love Miami against the Jets. Miami's a real team, Seth. Teddy Bridgewater to me, right there is the best backup quarterback in all of the NFL. I, even without Tua, I'm not a big believer in the Jets. I think Miami laying three, way too light of a number. And then, Seth, we talked about Tampa Bay and Atlanta. Look, Atlanta's been a nice story, but now they're really facing a much improved team, a, a much tougher opponent this week. I think Tampa Bay puts up 30-plus points on the board, like them laying eight points. And I'll give you one more game, Seth. I talked about the Bears, how bad I think they are. Love Minnesota laying seven. I think it's a great spot for them to get healthy. Justin Fields, in my opinion, can't play quarterback. Vikings win this game by double digits. Brad, great stuff as always. Thank you for joining me. Coming up, before I wrap, I'll give you my thoughts and predictions for the upcoming Eagles versus Cardinals matchup. Special thanks to Strategic Sports Marketing. They've taken care of me for 15 years. They'll do the same for you. For over 20 years now, Strategic Sports Marketing has been a leader in the sports industry. With deep relationship among athletes and companies of all sizes, SSM knows what it takes to build effective partnerships. They've been helping me for 15 years now. From speaking engagements and endorsement deals to special guest appearances and much more, no budget is considered too small. And check out SSM's sister company at sportsballshop.com where you'll find everything for your gift-giving needs. Keep an eye out for upcoming coupon codes exclusive to the Seth Jordan Show. Former Eagles linebacker Seth Jordan here to tell you about Artie Clear kitchens, baths, drywall, and roofing. For kitchens and bathrooms, roofing, windows, and other home improvement needs, call my friend Artie Clear. Get 100% no money down financing with payments as low as $59 per month. The first 59 calls will also receive a $400 discount on their first order. And if you're a senior citizen, double. Look for Artie's ad in the Metro. Call today, Artie Clear kitchens, baths, drywall, and roofing. This car is a steal. Hey, Seth, let's do a deal and I'll throw in this great gift. <laughs> is that the way you used to buy a car? Forget about it. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Davis Honda has over 300 pre-owned vehicles right now. Come see why Davis Honda won Best of Burlington six years in a row. I'm Seth Jordan and I drive a Davis Honda. Seth, Caitlin, you forgot your great gift. <laughs> Last season, this team started out 9-0 before injuries and inconsistent play ravaged their season. They have had highs and lows in the last four games that has them and the entire NFC West knotted at 2-2. Two and two. The offense can strike fast with Murray at the helm and his ability to improvise. The defense, likewise, can be opportunistic. Jalen Hurts will need to be aware of where Buda Baker is on every single play. 
He's a difference maker for this defense. Ultimately, I think the Eagles will be too much offensively for the Cardinals. Inspiring the defense to turn up the heat and pressure Murray, you got to keep him in the pocket. I like the Eagles to win this game 33-26. to 26. That's the show for this week. Join me next week as we look back on the Cardinals game and ahead to Sunday night football. It's Dallas week. Nothing more to say. Good night. Bridgeview Partners Strategic IT Consulting and Services saving clients money and time by optimizing enterprise systems for over 10 years now. If you're an IT professional, what are you waiting for? Contact a very experienced team at Bridgeview Partners. These guys have an awesome reputation in the Philadelphia market for their thought leadership specializing in infrastructure optimization and IT service management for healthcare, retail, finance organizations, and many others. Go to bridgeviewpartners.com to learn more and go Eagles! This car is a steal. Hey Seth, let's do a deal and I'll throw in this great gift. <laughs> <laughs> is that the way you used to buy a car forget about it get to davis honda in burlington davis honda has over 300 pre-owned vehicles right now come see why davis honda won best of burlington six years in a row i'm seth Joyner and i drive a davis honda seth caitlin you forgot your great gift <laughs> Birds fans, if you understand that success is built on trusted relationships and reliable performance, Mid Penn Bank is the right bank for you. We're on a mission to prove that the right bankers can make a big difference and work harder for you. With financial centers strategically located to serve the greater Philadelphia area, we are ready to bring you the best in commercial and personal banking. Visit midpenbank.com or call the number on your screen. Mid Penn Bank, the right bank for you. Member FDIC. Go Eagles! 